Now, if the north of England were a country, it would be second only to Greece for the lowest levels of investment in the OECD. That's according to a new report by the Institute for Public Policy Research. North. Northern leaders are meeting today at the Conference of the North in Manchester where they're calling on the government to move away from the competitive bidding systems such as the levelling up fund. Well, we can talk now to north of the Tyne Mayor, Jamie Driscoll, who's at the convention in Manchester. Welcome. What's the message that you would want to convey? Hi, thanks, Janet. The number one thing is that, as, as we've seen from this report, the investment in the north is shockingly poor and has been for a long time. If we are going to be a successful country, that means getting people's skills levelled up, it means better transport infrastructure, then we can generate the wealth we need in our country and the North can be a huge part of that. You know, for, for 100 years, the North powered the Industrial Revolution. We're a global leader. It's where we should be back again. And, I mean, obviously there is investment coming through. We, we see the, the levelling up fund just announced its second tranche of investment. What are your concerns about where things are falling short specifically? Well, we've just got our new Northeast devolution deal announced, which is the largest devolution deal in Britain, in England. Um, so that's £48 million a year. But if you compare that to the shortfall in rail investment, the fact that our public services across the board are on their knees, everybody, nurses, civil servants, firefighters, education, is struggling with recruitment and retention. So unless we actually invest, we've got to see this as a down payment on a successful future and not just simply write it off as, as government spending. Because unless we level up our people and rather than a beauty pageant of, well, you know, let's open a leisure centre there, let's open this little um, project here, we need to be thinking on a strategic basis. If you think of Britain as a corporation then nobody would just decide on an ad hoc basis what products they were going to bring forward. You would have a proper research and development. You'd have proper workforce planning. Um, and this sort of uh, uh, deciding where things are going to go in order that a minister can turn up and cut a ribbon, it's not a strategic plan for levelling up Britain. How long do you think it would take to achieve what you would like to see? Um, well, <laughs> a lifetime probably, because I'm quite ambitious on this. Um, I would love to see a fully integrated transport system. I would love to see us leading the way on the green industrial revolution. We're already doing a lot. There's a lot of great work built there. And if you look at the north of Tyne, I've been married the north of Tyne for coming up to four years now. Um, last year, we were the number one region for inward investment in Britain, creating thousands of jobs. We have a, a fantastic and flourishing uh, green offshore wind sector. But we are also still suffering from long-term health inequality. Our healthy life expectancy is the lowest in England. And turning things like long-term health inequality around does take decades. And it's not just about investment in clinical treatment. It's about people growing up in houses that are warm. It's about people growing up believing that they're going to have a job. And it's the dream of every parent that their children will be better off than they are. And I think at the moment, a lot of people growing up don't believe that. What is it that has sort of propelled you into this role? What is it that drives you? Um, well, I'm proud Northeastern. I've only ever lived in the Northeast, different parts around the Northeast. Um, and over the, the, the past decades, I remember in the 1980s, 1985, my dad, dad lost his job in, um, in ICI, in Teesside. Um, we saw our shipyards close, we saw our mines close, we saw our steelworks close. Um, and often our brightest and our best reach a point in their careers where they have to move and leave the region. And they often want to come back. And it's about creating a place where nobody feels they have to leave. And it's sustainable economically. It's about generating the wealth here and getting to that situation where we don't need transfers of money. We do need the transfers of money in to get the education and the transport system up to a standard where it becomes self-sustaining in terms of wealth generation. So it's the belief that the North can be massively successful. My part of the world in the Northeast with our new devolution deal it is massively going to help that. But there is so much still in the hands of central government. And if they don't make these decisions, if they don't make it easier, for example, for pension funds to invest uh, in our areas, then we're always going to be struggling. And that's something that, that we should resign to history. North of the time, Mayor Jamie Driscoll, thank you. Thanks, John.